at the, in the next, say, six months? Uh, that is something that we can see how markets are repricing, and there's a measure called one-year inflation, one-year forward. So what does markets think one-year inflation is a year from now? That has been creeping up. It's actually now at 3.6. It's been a trigger point in the past where the market starts to worry. So whether it's the, you know, the, ex- the deportation that's causing that or fiscal you know, fiscal spending, I'm not sure. But, you know, it is, markets are starting to think about it. Or more of just better growth outlook could help inflation expectations rise. I guess where Trump trade 1.0 ran into trouble was around trade policy. And, and once we see what he delivers there in terms of tariffs, something he's been very, very consistent on, do you think the market is looking past that or everything else, the deregulation, the lower corporate taxes, is going to offset any weakness on trade? Um... I mean, I think that if someone was trying to paint a negative picture, that's the, tr- the tariffs and the trade is, is what's on people's minds. But, if, of course, that's the one where we don't know what the ultimate sort of policies will be. I'm sure markets will actually provide a lot of real-time feedback, and I think that's going to help shape what the policy is. So I, I think, in general, we should expect a pro business environment, one that's probably equity friendly as well. First, Lee notes that Russell 2000 firms are poised for substantial revenue growth, outpacing the S&P 500 by a significant margin in 2025 from 2024 thanks to the Fed's potential rate. Well, part of it is the backdrop. Small caps have underperformed for the last five years by really the largest margin in 25 years. They're now trading at 10 times median P.E. relative and for the S&P that's almost 18 times, so a 7 P.E. discount. Small cap earnings growth is faster, and not only that, but roughly uh, 44% of it is what I'd call very cyclical, and that's things like regional banks and industrial. Tom Lee discusses the potential of a stock market bubble, specifically mentioning NVIDIA and the broader market trends. He addresses concerns about a bubble forming, noting that NVIDIA's market capitalization has seemingly doubled quickly. We were mentioning Elon Musk a moment ago, um, and over the weekend, He endorsed this notion from Senator Lee about end the Fed, essentially. Journal over the weekend with the piece about Powell preparing or or being ready to defend a removal if, in fact, he's asked to leave. Uh, Do you think the bond market would revolt at any kind of attempts to influence the Fed or re-executivize the Fed? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, the Fed uh, is the most powerful entity in the world, and part of it is its independence, and it's something that even the bond market is scared of. Uh, I, I think changing this, this the structure of the central bank would be not good for capital markets. Yeah, that's right. I think the Fed at this point would be more concerned if the consumer expectations got unanchored on inflation, and those have actually been improving. So I think the Fed can be less worried about the inflation. But he argues that the company's significant increase in free cash flow justifies the stock price rise. NVIDIA's free cash flow was $7 billion a year ago and is now approaching a $50 billion run rate, which represents a seven-fold increase. He contrasts this with the stock price. I share stock market's latest news, datas and important information on my Telegram channel. If you want to stay updated with these things before everyone else, open the description of this video. Click on my Telegram channel's link and simply join my Telegram channel. Did you see Tepper talking about China? Do you, do you, would you ever subscribe to that theory? Buy a lot in China. Yeah, I mean, I'd say that not only did China launch a bazooka, but it's, it's really working, right? Because the, 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 the stock market is, has really broken out. I think China is now the best performing right. stock market. The conditions setting small caps up for a big rally mirror the situation in 1999, Lee wrote, when the sector embarked on a streak of outperformance that lasted more than a decade. A in 1999, this was also the same exact launch point for 12 years of outperformance. From 1999 to 2011, small caps outperformed by 650 BP annually and a cumulative 113%. Uh, yeah, I mean, something to keep people's back of their mind over the last 10 years, China has underperformed the U.S. by 7,700 basis points. So if China doubles, it's still underperformed by like 5,000 basis points. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of room for a rally, even if it looks corrective. Tom Lee from Fundstrat shares insights on the current market trends, particularly focusing on NVIDIA and the AI-powered rally, which is showing no signs of slowing down. NVIDIA recently hit an all-time high, and the Nasdaq closed above 17,000 for the first time. NVIDIA's stock has surged nearly 20% since its earnings report the previous week. Other chip sector stocks, such as Micron, 
NXB, Qualcomm, and Texas Instruments, also hit all-time highs. Lee remains bullish as the market heads into June, citing that investor confidence has been low, with much cash on the sidelines, but now appears to be flowing into the market. He advises investors to stick with what is currently working, especially AI-related names like NVIDIA, Cadence, and Supermicro. Additionally, he mentions industrials, financials, ozempic related trades, Bitcoin proxies, and a growing small-cap stealth rally as promising investment areas. In summary, Lee is optimistic about the market, emphasizing NVIDIA and other AI-related stocks, small caps, and several other sectors as attractive investments. But small caps actually have faster revenue growth. 6.9% versus 5.5% or nearly 25% faster growth. And that's true in every quintile Lee said in a video on the topic posted this week. Second, Lee also highlighted small caps earnings growth potential, projecting 19% growth as earnings per share, outpacing the S&P 500's 12% EPS growth. He said small caps have an advantage in their lower P.E. ratios compared to large cap stocks, making them look more affordable to investors. Finally, the fund strategy CEO noted that institutional investors have been dumping small caps for years, making them ripe for a turnaround trade. We see this performance chasing as a key factor for small caps to sustain gains, he added. I use a stock market strategy in which I pick 10 stocks every month using artificial intelligence and get massive returns. Using this strategy I have turned $4,000 into $143,000 in the last one year. The 10 stocks I bought last month has given me 177% return and I have again bought these 10 stocks. If you want to learn the strategy which I have revealed in my 3-hour course and get access to see which 10 stocks I'm buying every month and which trades I'm taking, plus all these benefits, click the link in description and join my Patreon. Join fast because this is a limited time offer. Solid GDP growth since early 2023 and stronger than expected retail spending figures. Such positive economic fundamentals suggest a favorable environment for smaller companies. Rotation from large caps to small caps. Lee suggests a rotation among large investors from large cap stocks to undervalued small cap stocks. This rotation is driven by the perception that small cap stocks, currently overlooked, offer greater growth potential compared to their larger counterparts. Tom Lee discussed several more points and insights during the interview. Market Outlook Despite the market being extended in a mature rally, Lee believes it deserves the benefit of the doubt due to strong earnings backdrop and supportive economic conditions. He acknowledges some profit-taking today but sees it as a normal market behavior amidst good news. Drivers of Market Strength Lee identified three main drivers for market strength. Earnings upside With earnings beating expectations by 7%, there's potential for further upside, possibly $10 to $15 more per share this year alone. Risk Premium if the Federal Reserve continues to cut rates and the economy remains resilient. Technical strength. Despite technical indicators suggesting overbought conditions, Lee believes strong markets tend to stay strong, indicating ongoing investor confidence. Market risks and mitigation. Discussing leverage. Lee suggests that current lower levels of margin debt mitigate significant downside risks for now. He does foresee a potential air pocket in the first half, possibly around 7%, but believes there is resilience due to cautious investor sentiment and skepticism. Technology and FANG stocks. These continue to perform well, including companies like NVIDIA, benefiting from ongoing technological advancements. Healthcare innovations, specifically, products like Ozempic, which aids in weight loss and enhances worker productivity, they are cautious due to past market turmoil. However, as the market continues to rise, they will eventually have no choice but to jump back in. Consider this. If you have a lot of money to invest on behalf of your clients, and you've been sitting on the sidelines for the past 18 months, where will you allocate this money? The S&P 500 has already seen significant gains. The real opportunity lies in the Russell 2000, where the market has ignored these stocks for the past 18 months. The next stage of this market is the broadening of the rally. We've seen the rally in the big tech stocks and large caps. Now, the smaller companies will start getting attention. And now it's time for the smaller companies to get attention. Market rallies typically start with big companies and then broaden to include smaller ones. That's what we're going to see now. When Tom Lee predicts a 30% rise until the end of the year, he's not talking about insignificant companies. People often misunderstand the Russell 2000 as being composed of irrelevant small companies. When you combine the anticipated rate reductions for the rest of the year with the fact that the IWM has been lagging behind other indexes, it sets the stage for substantial gains. Small caps, specifically the Russell 2000 and the IWM, are predicted to increase by 30% from now until the end of 2024. This kind of surge is enormous for an index, 
akin to a stock skyrocketing by 500% in a year. It's an insane projection. He argues that the Russell 2000 is heavily shorted. Once these shorts start to cover and the stocks begin to rise, it will trigger a snowball effect. We've seen this phenomenon before. Additionally, the entire index is currently oversold and has been for about 18 months. He's right, year to date, the IWM has gained 10%, which isn't bad, but it's lagging behind the S&P 500, which has gained 20%. Say the Russell 2000 as a proxy B versus the S&P 500, and you're saying after July, you actually think that there's going to be a significant outperformance of small caps versus that index. Yes, and, and that's kind of what happened uh, in that October to December rally, that as you know, uh, the large caps actually really sputtered uh, in late December and early January because of that rotation into small caps. And I, I think, again, because the positioning is even more short relative to large caps, that it, it could be an even more sizable move. Tom Lee, in his analysis, outlined several key predictions and insights regarding the Russell 2000 and small cap stocks. Significant rally potential. Tom Lee forecasts that the Russell 2000 could experience a substantial 30% increase by the end of 2024. This projection indicates a bullish outlook on small cap stocks. Short covering and oversold condition. Lee emphasizes that the Russell 2000 is currently characterized by heavy short interest and an oversold condition. This situation sets the stage for a potential short squeeze, where short sellers may rush to cover their positions, driving the stock prices higher. Interest rate cuts. Anticipating rate cuts by the Federal Reserve in 2024, Lee expects these reductions to benefit smaller companies disproportionately. Lower interest rates typically reduce borrowing costs and can stimulate economic activity, particularly benefiting sectors reliant on financing. Economic Indicators Lee points to robust economic indicators as supportive of a small cap rally. These include steady unemployment rates, but let's address that. For the remainder of the year, we're likely to see two or three rate cuts. When rates are high, as they have been for the past 18 months, investors seek safety in money market accounts and big caps, which are less affected by high rates because they don't need to borrow money. When the Federal Reserve changes the rules and lowers rates, money becomes cheaper, and investors move from big caps and money markets to smaller caps where new opportunities lie. But as Tom Lee brings attention to this, more people will follow. As a smart investor, you should be part of this rotation. Instead of going all in, consider dollar cost averaging, reallocating sideline capital, or trimming big winners. Be strategic. The opportunity lies in the Russell 2000, where stocks have been neglected. With the Federal Reserve expected to cut rates and the Russell 2000 poised for growth, now is the time to start rotating funds into these small cap stocks. Here's the refined version of the final segment with the complete context. Investing all at once in any investment is a huge mistake. That's not how you do it. As a smart investor, you want to be part of this rotation and participate in this opportunity. You don't achieve this by going all in, selling all your stocks, and buying small caps right now. Instead, smart investors will rotate some of their funds. This means taking the money they've had on the sidelines, trimming a bit from their biggest winners, taking 30% off the top, and gradually reallocating that into IWM stocks. They do this through dollar cost averaging, DCA, and strategic allocation of sideline capital, not by making impulsive, all-in decisions. Now on top of this, Tom Lee, in his analysis, outlined several key predictions and insights regarding the Russell 2000 and small cap stocks. Significant rally potential. Tom Lee forecasts that the Russell 2000 could experience a substantial 30% increase by the end of 2024. This projection indicates a bullish outlook on small cap stocks. Short covering and oversold condition. Lee emphasizes that the Russell 2000 is currently characterized by heavy short interest and an oversold condition. This situation sets the stage for a potential short squeeze, where short sellers may rush to cover their positions, driving the stock prices higher. Interest rate cuts. Anticipating rate cuts by the Federal Reserve in 2024, Lee expects these reductions to benefit smaller companies disproportionately. Lower interest rates typically reduce borrowing costs and can stimulate economic activity, particularly benefiting sectors reliant on financing. Economic Indicators 